The day has finally come. We have built a tray and canopy for the Navara. The question that people have been asking me for years now, why don't you have a tray and canopy? We've finally done it. In this video, we'll just run through a few initial things, why I got the tray and canopy. And then we're gonna do a run through of the build process, which is super cool, a bit of a behind the scenes of how a tray and canopy is built. Then we'll do a walkthrough of it. And then at the end, we'll do weights and cost of the whole setup. I have run a tub on both of my utes for the last probably four or five years now, and it's worked okay for me. A tub's not too bad. But given that four-wheel driving and camping is my sort of passion and what I do in life, and obviously all these videos as well, it made sense that I eventually do the upgrade and try something different. Now, for what I use it for, it will be a much more sensible, practical, and usable setup. Obviously, I don't have a big tub that I can just chuck everything in the back, but I'm going to have a well-set-up canopy with all the compartments, everything I need, all the dual battery system. You got your fridge, you got your drawers. It's just going to be so good. The guys who built the train canopy are G Works in Port Macquarie. We worked together on a little bit of a sponsor setup where they have helped me out with costs. And it's been good to work with them because they are a local business for me. It's all Australian sort of made, manufactured, produced product. And their knowledge and skills in this area is just unbelievable. And I'm so happy with how this has come out. This car has just become what I <laughs> dreamed of having and what I thought I'd never have the setup it is now. It's just unreal. We'll rewind back to this morning where I did a run through of the build of this thing. I didn't film everything, but I filmed majority of the steps along the way. So what I'll do is I'll sit here, I'll, I'll overlay that footage and run through how it all went. After we did that initial design, we went back and forth between us a few times, sort of trying to work out the best way we could do it. You get it right from the start on the computer and you can see exactly how it's all gonna turn out. We did tweak a few things here and there and then we ended up coming up with a design that looked super cool. And that's basically your initial step of building a train canopy, is getting the design on the computer. Now when you go to a company, they already have pre-existing designs, and then if you want to do a custom design, then they'll have to change that around and tweak that around on the computer. Now once that is all done, it's time for the cutting. Now the material was 4mm alloy, for the tray and then three mil alloy for the canopy. They buy big sheets of alloy which then get cut into the shapes which the computer has told it to do using the machine. Now there is different ways you can cut alloy. At the moment they are cutting it using another local place in Port Macquarie, a water jetter. So that gives you all your, your sheet sizes, um, number of sheets and how thick. Once you get all the objects in there that's where you select how many you want to put on. Auto nest, it'll optimize the best way of packing all those sheets in. So cool how they do it. It's basically cut using high pressure water. The sheets get laid laid out um, on like bars that then sit it flat down onto a big water bed where you then have a machine that moves around. So you put the designs onto the computer and then the machine moves around and cuts all the alloy according to the shape it's been told using extreme high pressure water with some abrasive in it. Now it is super accurate, they said it's no more than 0 0.02 of a mil out, so it's extremely accurate. And then they get all the cuts, all the bits and pieces, exactly how they need, and then they take it back to their workshop. got all the cut pieces of alloy back they start putting them into the metal press which is a massive press machine where they slot the metal in and once again that's another computerized system so you put the bends and folds and everything you need in the computer and then you slot the sheets into that big bender and then it will bend them to the exact shape you need put the dimensions in and it gives you a little Demo? Yeah. And then you do the real thing. Mm -hmm. 
While that's all going on, there's a fair few bits and pieces that are going on behind the scenes. I won't go through it all, but a big one is choosing the tail lights. The ones Nick chose for my trays turned out so good. I'm super happy with them and they really set off, set off their look down the back end. Then once your alloy has all been bent to shape, start assembling it exactly in the layout it needs to be and then start welding it together. With mine, they really went for that low weight. So in the computer, what they ended up doing was cutting a lot of holes in the framework, which didn't actually reduce any strength but took some of the weight down. Just because you've got to be really strict with weight in these dual cap utes to keep them under the GMB. Now in the early stages of the build, I went and got my car weighed in its original form at the Weighbridge. Now it came in at 2,720 kilos, and the GMV of these is 2,910 kilos. Now I basically had everything in it when I weighed it. I had the roof rack up there with the rooftop tent, I had a full tank of fuel, I was in it. I had 90% of my camping gear in there, I had 40 litres of water. So I did have a lot in there, but it still was meaning, you know, we've only got a couple hundred kilos of working room here. So I thought we're going to really have to keep the weight down on this thing. Now we're already going alloy, we're already going a smaller setup, but that was why they sort of made that framework just as light as possible so that when it would come out, it would weigh basically the same as what the tub and rear bar did anyway then it was just going to come down to how I packed it. Once it's all welded and put together, they do a bit of a pre-test, sit it all together, see how it's going to look. And then all the bits and pieces went off to the powder coaters. It was going to get powder coated black. Now I didn't actually film anything of the powder coating. That was a little bit hard to do, but off it went. And then we got it back a few days later, all the bits and pieces all fully powder coated. While that was going on, they pulled the tub and rear bar off the nav, brought it back down, you know, back down to the chassis and suspension, gave it all a good clean up under there. Now they had it all back, all ready to go on the Navara and it was time to start fitting it all up. Get the tray on, get your wheel arches on, get the lights and all the back part on, get your jerry cans on, get your spare wheel on, get the canopy on, get the, uh, all the wirings and electric done. And then from there it was all ready to go, drove it out of there at five. 5 p.m. Christmas Eve. They worked very hard to get it done in time for Christmas for me. A little bit of a Christmas present and because we were going away January and they were shutting down for a couple of weeks. Now obviously I condensed down what was a lot of work for them and all the work that goes into building a train can be down into five minutes on a video but I just try to put the main points in there to keep it entertaining and give you a bit of an idea of what goes in to behind the scenes of building it all. Now it's time to uh, show how it all came, came out. From the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. Here it is, all done. This is just absolutely exceeded my expectations of how good it looks. What an awesome job they did. All right, let's run through what they've done. As I said earlier, the tray is four mil alloy. We ended up going with a 1650 length and 1750 wide, I believe it is. And then the canopy is three mil alloy and it is 1200 long. Now the entire thing has obviously been powder coated black. It was a fair debacle of what colour to go with. I really like the look of black. The problem I'm going to have is it's going to get destroyed on the tracks uh, with scratching and obviously a bit more heat but with the rooftop tent up there it actually keeps the heat down a lot. I've had it uh, out in hot days already and there's not really that much heat in there. Now we sit down here we've got the wheel guards uh, three piece. Down the back we've got the dual jerry can holders one on each side. 
You obviously can use these for diesel or water, depending on your trip away. So they've just got a lock on the top and a latch. You know, I've got jerry cans in there at the moment, but yeah, I can carry 40 litres of either or 20 of both. Now we do have some room down the back here, which I went for because it's kind of a little workbench for me, so I can make my lunch on there sit things on there rather than it just coming straight to the end. Got the big spare wheel at the back, the 33 inch tyre. <laughs> now that's obviously looking a bit ugly at the moment. Um, I'm waiting on new tyres to come and I've also got a rim that's the same as the other rim so that'll look much prettier. If I've got that done by the time I do this video I'll put that up so you can see what it looks like but yeah that's something that we still got to fix up. And now I've got to drill a hole in this too so I can put a padlock in there. And then down the back here we obviously got the rear end which to me just sets the whole thing off. They did an absolutely brilliant job of this. So we got the tail lights here which obviously got your reverse lights, your blinkers, everything else. These are bolted on with big nuts and washers. If anyone's wondering the reason they did that is because it's probably just as strong as welding if not even stronger than welding. Um, and if I bust one of them on something it can easily be swapped out whereas if it's welded on that's a nightmare to try and swap it out. And then down the bottom they've just made up a little bar here to put my reverse camera in and to cover up my chassis rails. I am getting a, I think I'm going to get one of those Heyman and Reese X bars which has the recovery points and the tow point in it as well. So I'll get one of them organised. Um, after these Christmas holidays. Now this is obviously where it's mounted underneath using your big mounts. Now this, as I said, it's not fully complete yet. We, we got this thing finished five o'clock Christmas Eve. The boys worked super hard to get it done for me. Kind of squeezed me, in, squeezed me in before Christmas so I'd get it done for this next big trip we've got in a week. Um, they squeezed me in between all their other jobs but they just didn't get a chance to sort of finish off every bit and piece of it. But after we get back in the new year, we're going to build some under tray toolboxes which will go here on either side and that'll get all that covered up and then we're going to build a trundle drawer which will pull out the back there where the number plate is which will fill that space in under there because obviously you can see there's a bit of space between the chassis and the tray and then we'll probably look at putting a water tank up uh, we'll do a half length trundle drawer and put a water tank up the front, a 40 litre water tank. Now we are putting a water tank up underneath because often people put them in the headboard but we went no headboard on this. The reason being I'm never taking the canopy off, like this is just going to be set up all the time for four wheel driving and camping, I have no need for a flat tray. So we just took the headboard out so we could move the canopy forward on that, on that rear axle and it was just wasted space and weight really. It just meant we couldn't put a water tank in there, but I'm super happy with how this came out. I was sort of a bit unsure of whether it would look a little bit weird without a headboard, but I think it looks perfect. And then we've got the Drifter rooftop tent up here mounted onto the canopy, which is much stronger than onto the roof rack, onto the roof of your vehicle, as you would have seen when my previous roof rack fell off. And then that still leaves the roof rack space free. We've got some recovery tracks up there. It does overhang a bit. Um, but it's got plenty of support with these two big bracings they got sort of along underneath here Like it's not going anywhere And then we still got room there to put I probably put my chainsaw bag and a couple of other bits and pieces Might get a solar panel up here at some stage too. Let's open up the canopy and have a look inside now once again This is one of the work in progress things We've just temporarily set this up to get me through this trip and then once I get back we're gonna do a full deck out inside here. So we've got heaps of room in here. For the moment I've just temporarily put a bit of a floor mat down. I've got my alley box there. I've got a few drifter bags and there's just gonna be, can't wait to do this thing. I probably, there's gonna be heaps of room in there but already a bunch more storage than what I had before. And then over this side, you know, it's got water. I haven't properly packed this yet for our trip. I'm still working out how I'm gonna do it. I've just temporarily sat some things in there. I've got that spare rim in there as well for when we do these tyres over the next couple of days. Now this is just a temporary measure once again, but I've just built me up a fridge slide so I can pull my fridge out. It comes right out, that way I can reach up and get into it. You know, it's got a bit of room down here to put my axe, I'll probably put my saw there too, and then I've got some space here to put a few utensils and stuff. And then we've just temporarily done a little bit of an electrical setup there because my dual battery system has all remained where it has in the car for the moment. 
but we've just wired through an Anderson plug for the fridge and some charging outlets. And then after Christmas, we're gonna do a full electrical panel through here and we'll get everything in here so it's all beautifully set up. We've got some lights up on the doors, both doors. I still gotta finish plugging them in. I'll plug them into my stuff there. The canopy is all lockable. It's key lockable at the moment. And then we got the plugs here to do central locking, which is another thing we will do down the track as well. I'm super psyched to get this thing properly fitted out, but even what it is now is just way better than what I had before. It keeps everything in there dry, safe, locked, out of the dust, out of the weather. Now let me know what you think. I don't know, I'd keen, I'd love to see some good setups in these canopies. What I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna buy a stand-up fridge. I was sort of against them because I thought the food's just going to go everywhere on, on the tracks but we actually test fitted one in there today and the way it's set up it holds the food pretty securely and it fits perfect there and it had an 80 litre one. Uh, it was obviously more room than this 50 and it weighed similar and that just meant you could sit it right there and just have a pull out fridge which would be awesome. And then over this side next to the fridge, I was thinking I'll just have a bit of an empty box that I can put like my chairs and fire pit and chuck bits and pieces in there. And then over the other side, I'll probably do a full drawer set up over here and then have room for stacking on top. But we still got to work within those weights. <laughs> you got to stay under GVM or I am possibly thinking of doing a, you can do a 100 kilo GVM upgrade on these. I know you can or you may be able to do a little bit more which would get me over the line if I needed to. It does become hard because you've only got about one ton of working room from factory, which sounds like a lot, but once you add passengers and all your bar work and tires and suspension and roof rack and camping gear and everything else, it quickly adds up. Now this tray and canopy base on its own weighs very similar to what the tub and rear bar did before. Now I realise I don't actually have the exact weights on me, I was meant to get them off them. But roughly, you're looking at about 250 kilos I think it was, for the tray and canopy. They kept it super light, which is not too much more than what the tub and rear bar were before, which would have come in around that 210, 220 kilos. And then you got to remember, I also had boxes in the other one which were weight for storage, whereas this has got the storage built into it. I'll run through the cost because I know <laughs> that's been 90% of my questions is about the cost of this thing. I'll pop them up on the screen too for you to see. From G-Works in Port Macquarie who built this tray and canopy. This is their starting prices. It obviously changes depending on what you get but this is sort of your starting price for something like this. But obviously if you're doing more, cust more custom or bigger dimensions or something like that it is going to go up. So the base tray, what you're looking at here, starts around that four and a half grand. Base canopy, what you're looking at here, starts around that five and a half grand. Now they do do a simpler wheel guard that comes with it, but these are sort of your higher end one, which are 450 for the pair. To get your under tray toolboxes, which are not done yet, but we but we'll go there, are about 850 for the pair. Your pull out trundle drawer down the back, you're looking at about 12, 1300 for a trundle drawer. Jerry cans are 450 each, meaning what you're looking at there, once we get the trundle drawers and the toolboxes in, you're looking at around that 13, 13 and a half thousand dollars. And then it will increase over time as I do my internal setups, and that doesn't factor in a dual battery system. If you already have one, you can just sort of transfer it in there, but if you're going to add in a dual battery system, if you're going to add in a drawer setup and a fridge, so you know you're going to add in an extra few grand there as well. Because I did work with G Works for the build of this, they helped me big time with the costs and that of it. Obviously, in return for a little bit of advertising for them, and they sort of want me to test out their products for them and let them know what works well and what doesn't work. And if they, you know, if I can think of any better ideas that they can incorporate into future train canopies and and given how i drive they know i'm gonna give this thing one hell of a beating out on the track so if anything's gonna go wrong with it i'm gonna be the one to find out but they're well confident it's gonna hold up but nick and adam there at g work said to let you guys know they're happy to offer a five percent discount if you were interested in getting a train canopy from them all you have to do is you mention that mention my name that you saw this build on youtube or instagram or anywhere wherever you saw it 
and they'll give you 5% off through to the end of January 2021. If you get the base base set up for about 10 grand, that's $500 off, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And obviously the more you spend, the more discount you're gonna get. All right, I think that's just about wraps up everything from this video. I'm so happy, so stoked of how this has all come out. And we're not even done yet. We still got more to go. It's gonna be an ongoing process over the next few months. Just get this thing just absolutely perfect. And this first trip away will be a good opportunity to test it out and see what I want, what I need, rather than just smacking it all in there in the first place and then heading out. The good thing that with these guys is it is modular. So you can get your base set up and then add your bits and pieces as you go. So you can just get a tray and canopy and then save off a bit of money, get your under tray toolboxes, save off a bit more, get your trundle drawer, get your jerry cans. Just get those base dimensions right and then you can add bits and pieces as you go. And if you happen to break it in an accident or something and you break a toolbox, they can easily give you a new one, replace it out because it's bolted on modular system. When it rains it pours, water's up to my chin. Once I fight it, to the very end. Now let's run through, let's run, th let's run through what they've done. As I said, let's run through what they've done. Yeah. Let's run through what the, let's run, let's run, let's run, let's run.